Adventures in Time and Space, told in future tense. Dimension X. Can you predict what will come in 100 years, or in 10, or in the next minute? Some people think they can. Nuclear scientists, mathematicians, astronomers, biologists. They'll predict the shape of the future. Why? Because they make the future. Because they see beyond the known dimensions of time and space into the unknown. Dimension X. We go ahead now in time to 1965. We're on a vast concrete runway set in the desert of the southwest. A giant metal ship stands before us, prow pointed for the stars. And in five minutes, the signal will flash and it will tear up through the atmosphere to the outer limit. Attention. Attention. Clear field for takeoff. Clear field. Five minutes, Steve. For right. takeoff. Where are up, Charlie? And they're over. I want to go over procedure again, Steve. Don't worry, I got it straight. You just make sure. Okay. I take her up on jets to 50,000, then I cut in the rockets. No lower, or your tail blast will burn out three counties. I climb four minutes on rockets, then start maneuver tests. Remember that, no more than four minutes. Right. This ship isn't like those strata rockets you've been testing. She's the first one built for outer space. If she works, she can go clear to the moon. If I'd have known that, I'd have brought my toothbrush. Well, not this trip. Now get this, Steve. You've got power there to clear the Earth's gravitational field. But remember, after you cut in the rockets, you've only got 10 minutes fuel. If you go beyond the outer limit and don't save fuel for the return... I know, I won't get down again. That's right, Steve. You'll drift off into space. Get that now. 10 minutes fuel. Gotcha. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this project is a lot more important than that cosmic ray bomb they're testing out in the Pacific tonight. The Security Commission brass doesn't think so. I don't see any undersecretaries under anything. Don't worry. In the long run, our ship will make the CR bomb back page stuff. But in the meantime, it's just as dangerous. Remember, half the principles in this ship are pure theory, Steve. Slide rule stuff. If anything goes wrong, we may have to scrape you off the landscape with a soup spoon. You have a charming sense of humor. Well, here's what I'm getting at. We're risking your neck in this test. If anything blows, we don't want to have the next man pull the same boner. I know, Hank. So keep your mic open and keep talking. If anything goes wrong, we want to know exactly why. And we won't be able to ask you. Let us know before you pull every switch. Before you do anything. You got that? Yeah. Even if you only have to blow your nose. All right, get those fuel lines away. Okay, Mr. Crow. Well, I guess that's about all, Steve. Hey, that reminds me. Look, if Mary calls, I'm just up on a milk run. I didn't tell her today was it. How is she? She's okay, but she's due about now, and I don't want her to be nervous. Hey, I didn't know the baby was that close. Yeah. Steve, I, I really ought to be sending a single man on this job. What, and cut me out of a soft paycheck? Forget it, Hank. You know, you can't get anybody else who can take 15 G's acceleration when those rockets cut in. Yeah, I know. It's time, Steve. Yeah. Well, see you later. Don't worry, Hank. I'll sweat for both of us. Button her up, Shelly. So long, Hank. So long. We'll give you the light from control. Extra war to control, extra war to control. Are you there yet, Hank? Okay, Steve. Got you on the speaker. I'm ready to go. Mr. Hanson. Ready on radar, Sergeant? Check. Mr. Hanson, you better see this. What is it, Elsa? Message center for Steve. Mrs. Weston just left for the hospital. What? Hello, Steve. Yeah. Stand by a minute. Shall we hold the takeoff, Mr. Hanson? What? Oh, yes. Uh, no, wait, wait just a minute. It's uh, it's too late now. You going to tell him? Maybe he's got enough to worry about. Hey, what's holding us up, Hank? Something on your mind? No, no, it's, uh, it's nothing, Steve. I just wanted to say good luck. Clear for takeoff, Charlie? Right. Okay. Give him the light. All right. 
charge, Steve. I'm reading you clear. I'm at 40,000. Airspeed 600. She's running fine. Soundproofing works. There's a third degree waiver in the AGY pressure. Got that, Charlie? Check. Uh, dead center on radar, Mr. Hanson. 50,000 now. Cutting out the port jet. Now the starboard. I'm off jets. Airspeed dropping. Opening the rocket ports. Switch sticks a little, Charlie. Oxy alcohol pressure 350. All right, now I'm advancing the ignition key. Here goes rocket one. Steve. Steve, you all right? Yeah. Looks like somebody slugged me with a sledgehammer. Airspeed now 1200. Here goes number two. Rocket time is now four minutes. What's your altitude? Over to you. Speed 4,400, still climbing. Altitude, 297 miles. All right, you're at the outer limit. Level off for maneuver test. You've got exactly six minutes fuel left. Okay. Starting a three degree left bank. It's a little sluggish. There, it's all right now. There's a low vibration someplace. Maybe the cockpit hatch. I'm straightening out. Five minutes fuel left. Now I'm starting a three degree ru Hey! What's the matter? What's wrong? There's something up here. Something shining. What are you talking about? There's something above me, Hank. I'm going to chase it. Steve! Steve, you're at the outer limit now. I can see it plain now. Steve, don't go any higher. You've only got four minutes left. You've only got... Getting static. I can't hear you, Hank. It's dead ahead now. I'm going to make a pass at it. Get a good look. Hey, it's swerving to meet me. It's dead ahead now. It's dead ahead. Hello. Hello. Hello, Steve. Steve, come in. Nine minutes fuel gone. Still no sign on radar. Hello. Hello, Steve. Steve, what's happened? Charlie, get out the crash squad. Tell the Army squadron to alert their search planes. Right. Nine and a half minutes gone. Hello. Hello, Engine Steve. Squadron. What's happened? Hello? Where the devil is it? Charlie, come Hello. Mr. Hanson. Come in, Steve. We need a search squadron. Come in. No, Mr. Hanson's busy. Hello. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Ten minutes, Mr. Hanson. It's the end of this fuel. <laughs> How long has it been now? Ten hours, Mr. Hanson. Nothing more on radar, Sergeant? Screen's blank. Uh, Colonel Corelli called in. Search planes are back. He didn't find anything. Should be some trace. He couldn't have bailed out, could he? You don't hit the silk at 4,400 miles an hour. Either went past the outer limit, ran out of fuel, something blew, and we'll find the pieces scattered from here to the coast. Why does it have to be the best man? Always the best man. <laughs> I'll get it. Uh, Charlie, yes, Charlie, we, you know, we've got to That's figure right. out what was wrong. Yes. All right, I'll tell him. Something, something right. must have blown. Right? Yeah. There's a message from Northside Hospital for, for Steve. Well, what is it? Mrs. Weston's fine. It's a boy. Thank you, Elsie. It's a boy, Charlie. Oh, fine, fine. It's a boy. He didn't even know she went to the hospital. How am I going to tell Mary that? Wasn't your fault, Mr. Hanson? Ship had to be tested. Yeah, yeah, we'll build another one, and some other flying fool will shoot past the outer limit into space. Oh, I'm getting old, Charlie. You can remember when I used to take him up myself. Now I've got to send other men. It's a job, Mr. Hanson. Now I'm afraid. Every time I hear a jet go off, I jump. Every time I have to send someone up in a new model, I start to sweat. Mr. Hanson? Yeah? I think there's something on the radar. No flights scheduled in either, Elsie. We have the whole day cleared. It's coming in behind us. Here it comes over the building. 
What crazy jock is buzzing the field like that? Is that an army plane, Charlie? I can't see. It's turning. Charlie, alert the field. I know that engine. It's Steve. That's impossible. Look, that's his ship. It can't be. Well, there's no other model like that. It's Steve, all right. It's coming in. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> The quicker we get this done, the quicker you get over to see Mary and the baby. Hank. Elsie, give the order to check and refuel the rockets. I don't want anybody in here till I get Steve's reports. Bury any calls. All right, let's have it. What the devil happened to you? Hank, does that cosmic ray bomb still go off tonight? What are you talking about? Straighten out, Steve. Where have you been for the last ten hours? Listen, Hank, there's something more I'm... Come on, come on. I've got to get a report on the screen to Washington, so let's have it. I've got to know how you stretch ten minutes fuel to keep you in the air for ten hours. Now, one thing before I talk. Look, Steve. Have the Geiger men run over the ship before they refuel. What'd you run into? So help me, Hank, I don't know. But we better check and make sure it isn't radioactive. Elsie, add a Geiger report on the standard check. Steve, maybe we better have the doc look you over, too. No, no, I'll be all right. They said I'd be all right. They? Look, son, I know you've had a tough time, but we've had this field on the alert for ten hours. One of the army boys cracked up looking for you, and he's hurt bad. So let's have the story. Let's have it straight. I don't know how to tell you. Hank, I saw something up there. At 300 miles? I chased something up there, Hank, and I caught now it. Now, don't hand me that, Listen, Steve. Listen, I was cruising along, just starting the right bank, when I spotted something. It must have been going about half my speed. It was egg-shaped and smooth. I made a pass at it, and I was coming back for another, and then there was a humming sound. Humming? A sort of vibration, and I blacked out. I was headed straight for it at 4,400 miles an hour. I thought it was going to be the biggest smash since Hiroshima, and... I guess they were drinking that bottle. Never mind that, Steve. What happened? I came to inside their ship. Uh-huh. Steve, this whole thing has been a devil of a strain on you. I'm going to call Major Donaldson from the Army base. Ask him to sit in. Psychiatrist? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Let him run his tests. He'll tell you I'm not kidding. Because, Hank, unless I miss my guess, I've just been tipped off to the way the world ends. <laughs> All right, Mr. Weston, suppose you continue your story. Yes, let's have it, Steve. You woke up inside the ship? Yes, and uh, the place was jammed with machinery. Hmm. Dials, blinkers. I couldn't recognize anything. And you were surrounded by these men from Mars? I didn't say anything about men from Mars. I didn't even say they were men. I couldn't see them clearly. They were just there. Where did they come from, then? Another galaxy. Millions of miles outside of our solar system. That's all I know. You figure out where they came from. And they came all that distance to find the Earth? Yes. Did they tell you that? Yes. You mean they spoke English to you? No, no, they didn't. That's funny. I hadn't thought. They didn't really speak to me at all. They just planted the thoughts in my mind. You mean thought transference, telepathy? Yes, that's right. Well, Steve, what brought them here? We did, Hank. We rang their bell. We brought them in. Well, how? With our atomic explosions. Hank, that's why you've got to stop that bomb test tonight. Uh, I'll give up. Look, you've got to believe me, Hank. Oh, how can I make you understand? Maybe I can help, Mr. Weston. Would you submit to narcopsychometry? What's that? Under proper drugs, I can put you back in this uh, ship by suggestion. Then we can get a playback record of your memory pattern on the audio circuit. And how long will that take? Half an hour. We'll have to go over to the lab. Will you believe me if it checks? It will give us an accurate memory picture of what your mind reports. All right, let's go. Hank, you've got to believe me. We haven't got much time. You should be getting drowsy now. 
count backwards from ten. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Six. He's under. Now we attach the head plate electrodes. The cortical pickup. Look out for that wire, Mr. Henson. 3-0 setting, 31.3. Now throw that switch, Mr. Henson. I have to start him off by suggestion. All right, Steve. You're in your ship now. You're in the rocket. Rocket. You're in the rocket. You're in the rocket, and you've just sighted something strange. Now I'm starting at three degree right. What's that? Hey, there's something up here. Something shining. His memory pattern. We're picking it up electronically. There's something above me, Hank. I'm going to chase it. It's piped through the audio circuits. I'm getting static. I can't hear you, Hank. This is where we lost contact with him. I'm going to make a pass at it and... Hey, it's swerving to meet me. It's dead ahead now. It's dead ahead. Now, boss. This is where he blacked out. There's no telling how long, minutes or hours. What's that noise? I don't know, quiet. Where? How did I get in here? What? Who are you? Is he seeing things? Intergalactic patrol. What's that? What are they saying, Steve? What are they saying? It's about nuclear fission. They know about it. They know the danger of it. Long ago, they had wars that almost destroyed them. But finally, they learned. Now they've outlawed war. Go on, Steve. They patrol space. When their detector picks up an atomic explosion, they send a patrol. What are they going to do? They've quarantined us. Quarantined? They've isolated the Earth. Because we don't know how to control ourselves yet. Until we learn, we'll be a menace to the whole universe. What is this nonsense? Quiet. How are they going to do it, Steve? They've spread a layer out here of... I don't know how to call it. All around the Earth. It's miles deep. When there's an atomic explosion on Earth, the radioactive particles will drift up to this layer and set off a chain reaction. It'll go around the world in microseconds. And that's the end. The end? What's he... Wait, wait. Yes. Yes. I understand. I've got to bring back the warning. You're going to put me back in my ship to bring the warning. Now what? Blacked out again. I guess that's all. What does all that mean? It's what he remembers. You don't think that really happened? No, no. Narcosachometry circuits produce what he remembers. It just means that Steve believes this happened. I don't uh, like to see this. Uh, I've seen too many tough uh, pilots snap. Steve is the best I've known. Mm -hmm. How bad do you think he is? Frankly, outside of the presence of this well-organized hallucination, there's no sign of unbalance. It may not be too serious. If he had a more plausible story, I'd be inclined to believe Warning. him. Warning. Warning. Hank. It's all right, boy. Did you hear it, Hank? You understand? Sure, sure. We've, we've been quarantined. Now let me give you something to make you sleep, Steve. But don't you understand? They fixed it so that if we set off one more nuclear explosion, that'll be it. Of course. Don't roll your sleep down. You don't believe me. Now, take it easy, Steve. But the test tonight. They're setting off the CR bomb. Hank, what time is it? 11.20. Well, it's scheduled for midnight. I think we got to stop that bomb. Steve, let Donaldson give you the hypo. Thank you've got to believe me. I saw them. I got the warning. If we touch off that bomb tonight, it'll be the biggest galactic 4th of July of all time. The whole Earth will go up like a Roman candle. April 10th, 1965, the end. Now, look, Steve, you better calm down. Don't you want to see Mary and the baby? You've got a new son, remember? Yeah, that's just it. I, I want to see my son. I want him to live. If that bomb goes off, 
Hank, we've got to stop them. Mr. Hanson, I think we'd better get over to the base hospital. Hank, you've got to believe me. Yeah, they... sure, sure, Steve. Maybe there is something to it. Look, it's out of your hands. I'll put it in a report and shove it into Washington in the morning. In the morning? There isn't going to be any morning, Hank. Don't you understand? You've got to call Washington now. Get the head of the security commission and postpone that test. Now, you know I can't do that, Steve. My neck would be out a mile. Besides, this is 1965, not 45. Twenty countries have atomic bombs now. What's the use of stopping just this one? The rest will keep right on popping them Well, then we'll have to call an international conference. Can't you understand, Hank? The first one that goes off finishes us at the end. They've given us the quarantine warning. Steve, I think you'd better go with us to the base hospital. <laughs> Look, Steve. We can call up for a detail if we have to. All right, all right. I'll go with you. You don't need a straight jacket. That's the way, Steve. You'll probably feel better by morning. Let's go. Well, Steve, tomorrow I'll drive you over to the hospital to see Mary and the kid. Sure. Look at the ship under the floodlights. Pretty, huh? You'll be flying her again soon, don't you worry. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, what you doing out in the line? The, uh, refueler? Yeah, we got Clausewitz coming in tomorrow from Denver for another test. I figure we give you a day off. That's good. That's fine. Steve! Steve, come back! Come on, Donaldson. Steve! Steve, wait! He's heading for the rocket. Look, there he goes up. That crazy fool. We can't get at him now. That covers armor glass. He's waving. Yeah, towards control. It's the radio. He means the radio. Come on. I should have gotten help. Well, the radio's still hooked up here. Hello. Hello, Steve. Listen to me, Hank. You gotta call Washington now. Come out of that rocket, Steve. I'll call my men. Don't try anything, Hank. They refueled the rocket for tomorrow. Take it easy, Steve. Listen, you know what'll happen when I fire the rocket tubes down here? Steve, don't. It'll burn out every building for five miles. All of us in one big blast. Steve, what do you want? You've got to stop that bomb. You've got to call Washington right now. They won't believe me. You make that call or I cut in the rocket. Now, I mean it, Hank. Now, hook my screen to yours in parallel. I want to see exactly what you're doing. All right, all right. Just don't fire those rockets. Get going, Hank. you got 12 minutes to make that call and stop that bomb. All right, I'm making the parallel hookup right now. Donaldson, you think he'll really blast? I don't know. Up to now, I'd almost say he was normal, but now he's liable to do anything, Hanson. Steve, Steve, there, are you getting it on your screen? Yeah. Now, put that call through. All right. Operator. Visit screen to Washington. The visit screen circuits are busy, sir. If you'll try again in half an hour. This is security commission priority. Break in, get me a line. Yes, sir. Just a moment, please. Ten minutes, Hank. Listen, Steve, I'm trying. We're ready to take your call, sir. Uh, Washington, security commission three. This is urgent. I want Undersecretary Herbert Ames. Washington, three. One moment, please. Hurry, will you? One moment, please. What time is it, Donaldson? 11.51. Do you think he'll fire those rockets? He might. Washington? Visit screen three. Mr. Herbert Ames, please. That is a coded exchange. I cannot accept your call without clearance. Get it through, Hank! Listen, Washington, put it through. This is Mr. Hanson at San Marco Air Base. This is a priority call. I'm coded. One moment, please. I will check your code number. You get that through, Hank, and that bomb goes off at 12. Will you be reasonable, Steve? I... Your call has cleared, San Marco. Washington, visit screen three. Herbert Ames, please. Security Commission Ames. Listen, to Ames. Oh, hello, Hanson. Ames, you've got to get me to the chief. Are you kidding? He's at the test control room. Yes, I know, but get him for me. What's up? You look lousy. Or is it a bad circuit? There's no time. I've got to get him before the test. It's about the CR bomb. I can't take that responsibility. Get that through, Hank. Right, Flash. Hey, what's going on there? Ames, my project has a high enough rating. This is a priority A call. What? Well, okay, it's your neck. I'll try to get him for you. He's in the control room, so you'll have to switch off your screen and speaker and go on earphones. Too much going on in there. Security ruling. You hear that, Steve? I've got, uh, I've got to cut the incoming screen. All right, but don't try anything. Eight minutes, Hank. Hello. Hello. What? You got him, Hank? Yes. This, this is Hanson at San Marco. No, sir. Priority A request to cancel the bomb test. No, no, I'm serious. This is deadly serious. We sent the X-2 JTR up today to the outer limit. We uncovered evidence. Yes, on the automatic instruments. What's that? No possible chain reaction. No, I, I can't tell you the whole story. There isn't time here. 
Yes, yes, I, I'll bring the readings into Washington in the morning. You've got to postpone the test till you see them. Look, I've worked on contracts for the commission for 10 years. Yes, yes, I have complete confidence in my information. You can record that. All right, I, I'll call you back immediately. Bye. Hank? Hank? He's agreed to cancel, Steve. The bomb won't go off. All right, boy. You can come down out of that ship. He's opening up. Here he comes. All right, Steve. Come on down. Sure, Hank. Just a second. <sighs> Hank, I was scared. I was plain scared. Easy now. It's all over. The bomb won't go off. Thank God. Look, uh, I want to see Mary and the baby. <laughs> Can you get me transportation now? Well, wait a minute. It's almost 12. They won't let you in the hospital now. I want to see the baby. Sure you do, but you've been under a strain. I've got a shot for you here, Steve. Give you a good night's sleep. All right. Roll up your sleeve. Yeah, here. There. Yeah, that'll make you sleep. Sergeant will find you a bed. Yes, sir. Come on, Mr. Weston. Okay. Good night, Hank. I'm kind of beat. It's been a tough night. It sure has. I thought for a minute he was going to blast those rockets and send us all to kingdom come. Yeah. Quite a stunt getting the ray bomb test called off. It isn't called off. But the chief said... Ames couldn't get the chief. I was talking to a dead circuit. Bomb goes off in a couple of minutes. Oh. Poor Steve. He was one of the best. He was the best. One in ten million. Some story of his, poor guy. For a while, he almost had me believing that quarantine. That's a very common delusion. End of the world. Yeah. I suppose so. Ah, it's a nice night. Never saw the stars so bright. We better be getting in. That wind is cold. Huh? Well, the bomb goes off in 30 seconds. Poor Steve. You know, Hanson, there's just one thing. Yeah? It's outside my field, but I'm curious. How did he keep that ship in the air for ten hours with only ten minutes fuel? have just heard The Outer Limit by Graham Dorr, an adventure in time, space, and the unknown dimension. <laughs> now, about next week, have you ever heard of the Mark III the amazing electronic brain at Harvard that instantly solves the most complicated scientific problems. Suppose you had a mechanical brain like that in your house, a robot that was always at your service so that you could just sit with folded hands and relax the rest of your life. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Perfect. That's what they thought when it happened in the year 2006. But they were wrong, terribly wrong. How? I'll tell you next week. Tonight's story transcribed on Dimension X, The Outer Limit by Graham Dorr, was adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in the cast were Joseph Julian as Steve, Wendell Holmes as Hank, and Joe DeSantis as Major Donaldson. Your host is Norman Rose. Music was by Albert Berman. Sound designed by Sam Monroe. Edward King directed.
tomorrow, here's Sam Spade. Now it's Truth or Consequences on NBC. Adventures in Time and Space Told in Future Tense Dimension X Have you ever heard of the Mark III? The amazing electronic brain they're using now up at Harvard University. In mere minutes, it can solve scientific problems that our most brilliant mathematicians would take years to work out. Its intelligence is almost superhuman. And yet the scientists are already working on a new and improved model, the Mark IV. In fact, they tell us there's no earthly reason why these thinking robots can't be perfected until they become the servants of the future, capable of doing all the work of mankind. Yes, that's what the advertising billboard said in the year 2006. Housework made easy by the perfect domestic servant. Modern Mechanicals Agency, Harry Underhill, President. The billboard showed a smiling family, sitting with folded hands, watching their mechanical robot pour their morning coffee. But in the home of Harry Underhill himself, things weren't quite as pleasant at breakfast this day. I just can't understand it, Aurora. Look at this. Modern mechanical's down three points. And yesterday, Smithson canceled his order. If I could only figure out why. Why don't you ask him? Oh, Frank, dear, eat your oatmeal. Oh, Mom. I just don't understand it. Business was good, and then boom. Some louse must be undercutting my prices, that's all. How many robots were canceled? Not robots. Mechanicals, Aurora. How many times... They are robots, aren't they? Please, Aurora. There's an important difference in sales psychology. Maybe people are getting wise to your robots and mechanicals. What do you mean, Aurora? The perfect domestic servant. (laughs) They're ugly, stupid, clumsy, walking junk piles. Aurora. The one you brought home to me can't even wash the clothes properly. It's more trouble than it's worth. Aurora. You know our mechanicals are the best on the market. Those animated tin cans you sell? (laughs) They're certainly not making us any fortune. Well, with this new model, things are bound to pick up a little. If that Jarvis order just comes through. Oh, that robot of yours. There's something knocking again. Hey, wait, wait. Put that plate back. I haven't finished my breakfast yet. Wait! Tara, you know you've got to say stop. 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 Hmm. (sighs) You always get excited. You think you never saw a robot before. Not robot. Mechanical. All right, all right. Look, it's not its fault. We just took too long to eat. Timing relay is set for 15 minutes. Never mind, I want my coffee back. Set. Set. There, isn't that simple? It bends at the waist, stretches out its arm, and picks up the coffee pot just as if it were your... Hey, watch out! And spills it right in your lap! Oh, my (laughs) clean suit, Aurora! Oh, no. Harry, you know it's relayed to announce dinner after it sets the table. Hey, there goes my coffee again. Stop. Stop. Set. Harry, you can't give it two orders at once. What's that smell? There must be a short. Now see what you've done. Got it all upset. I did. All I said was... Stop. 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 Oh, it's no use. The brain coil is shorted out. Well, do something. Harry, do Me? something. Me? I sure will. I'm going to the office. I'm getting out of here. Yes, Lucy? Mr. Jarvis, I'm... Oh, put him on. Hello, Underhill. Hello, Mr. Jarvis. I'm glad you called. I was just going to ring you. Well, I've got that whole shipment of mechanicals for you. One gross plane, a dozen of the chromium fitted. Hold on, Underhill. I'm canceling the order. You're ca- But the invoice is made out and well, I... Well, tear it up. I'm canceling. But why? Underhill, there's a brand new mechanical on the market that makes yours look like something out of a museum. Oh, now, look here, Mr. Don't Jarvis. Don't look me, Underhill. I've seen them, and I'm telling you it'll put you out of business. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, Mr. Underhill? Uh, That's the third cancellation today. The world's going to pot. Yes, Mr. Underhill? Hmm? No, never mind, Lucy. I'm going home. What a day. 
I wonder if Aurora would smell it on me if I ducked into Garrigan's. She's got a nose like a beagle. Hey, that building wasn't here last week. Humanoid Institute, the perfect mechanical. <laughs> oh, no. We didn't have enough competition. Hey, these must be the cutthroats that are underselling me. At your service, Mr. Underhill. Huh? Oh, well, you startled me. <laughs> didn't hear you. Hey, you're a mechanical, aren't you? Not bad, not bad. Very lifelike. Won't you come in, please, and examine our service? Yeah, that's a remarkable voice. They've licked the variable inflection problem. You know, I'm in the same line myself. Uh, mechanicals, I mean. We're aware of that, sir. Oh? Hmm. Hey, some building you've got here. You sure got it up in a hurry. The Humanoid Institute at your service, Mr. Underhill. Yes? Oh, uh, how'd you know my name? For us, that was not difficult. Oh, is that so? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. This is ridiculous, talking to a mechanical. Must be somebody inside operating you by remote control. No, Mr. Underhill. Of course, there is Humanoid Central, which powers and controls all of us, but that is located on Wing 4. Wing 4? A planet in a remote part of the galaxy. Oh, oh yeah. Well, uh, may I see your salesman, please? We employ no human salesman, sir. We ourselves can accept your order for immediate humanoid service. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't expect me to buy one. I'm in the business myself. There will be no more need for your electronic mechanicals, sir. Once you have accepted our service, you will no longer have to work. Everything will be done for you. Everything? <laughs> That's quite an offer. At that rate, you'll have trouble supplying the demand. I think not, sir. As you can see from our storage room. Humanoids are now arriving at the rate of 5,000 per hour from Wing 4. 5,000 per hour? We are anxious to introduce our complete service on this planet, sir, to bring happiness to everyone. May we come out to your home for a free trial demonstration? No, I... Oh, I admit you're remarkable. The, the voice and movement, graceful even. But I'm still in business, and what's more, I wouldn't have you around the house. I'm afraid you will have no choice. Sooner or later, it will be necessary. Oh, is that so? Over my dead body, let me out of here. At your service, Mr. Underhill. Hmm. Well, it's going to be tough competition, all right. Uh, I'm going to stop in at Garrigan's, the devil with Aurora's nose. Oh, hi, Pop. Hello, Frank. How was the football game? We won. 78 to 3. Guess what, Pop? You made all the touchdowns. Nope. Mom took in a border. She took... She what? Aurora! She said if your business was going to fall on its face, she had to do something to make some money. Oh, she did, huh? Harry, what's all the racket for? You, you tell me. What's this about a border? Oh, shh, Harry. He's going to live in that little apartment over the garage. Oh, no, he isn't. You know I don't want any strangers around here. Oh, Harry, please, shh. Look, he won't bother you. He's a nice old man. Oh. He just wanted a room and a place to work. He's an inventor, I think. Oh, he is, is he? Did he pay in advance? Well, he can't. You see, his mm -hmm. royalties haven't started to come in. Mm-hmm. Aurora, how can you be taken in by every beat-up old panhandler that gives you a sob story? Oh, Mr. Sledge isn't like that at all. Oh, that reminds me, dear. Can you give me a ten? A ten? What for? Well, Mr. Sledge is ill. He needs some medicine for his heart, and I said I'd lend him the money. You get... Oh, Aurora, this is the limit. He goes out right now. Now, don't be unkind, Harry. Besides, we need the rent money. Things aren't that bad yet. He goes. Please, shh. What are you shushing me for? Mr. Sledge, he's in the next room. I've invited him for dinner. Oh. Frank, dear, wipe your mouth. Oh, Mom. More gravy, Mr. Sledge? No, thank you, Mrs. Underhill. Mr. Sledge, my wife tells me you're a traveling man. Uh, expect to move on, sir? Harry. I had hoped to do a little work, Mr. Underhill. You see, I've applied for basic patents here on Earth for a very important development. Oh, a new invention, huh? Yes. My field is rhodomagnetics. Rhodo what? Rhodomagnetics. 
It's a new force field theorem, key to the second triad of the periodic table. Rhodium, ruthenium, and palladium. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm a little rusty on my science. It's well known in other parts of the galaxy, but I've been able to apply for basic patents here. Worth uh, millions, huh? Perhaps you find it strange that the holder of such valuable property should be in need. Well, uh, yes. I'm a refugee, Mr. Underhill. I arrived on this planet only a few days ago. Mm-hmm. But you will be uh, shoving on again. Oh, for goodness sakes, Harry. That's all right, Mrs. Underhill. I understand. After all, I am an intruder in your home. And if it inconveniences you at all, I'll find some other place to sleep and set up my workshop. Oh. Harry, your robot is spilling the coffee again. I'll have to have it tightened up. Why doesn't your company bring out a better mechanical... One smart enough not to spill things. Wouldn't that be splendid? The perfect mechanical already exists, Mrs. Underhill. They are not so splendid, really. They are why I am a refugee today. Oh? Where did you say you came from? Wing 4. Wing 4? Oh, then you must mean those humanoids. Humanoids? Mr. Sledge. Humanoids. What do you know about them? Well, they just opened an agency here in Two Rivers. No. No. <gasps> Harry. What is it? Well, what's wrong, Mr. Slade? Give him some water. It must be his heart. Call, call Dr. Windus, Aurora. No, no. I'll be all right. Here, you better sit down. <sighs> I'm sorry. It was just shock. I came here to get away from them. The, the humanoids? Yes. I wanted to finish my work before they came. But now... I won't trouble you any further. But, Mr. Sledge, Harry, he's sick. Well, uh, Mr. Sledge, I, I don't think you'll have to go right away. <sighs> he can stay, Harry. Sure, after all, the way those humanoids are coming along, I'm liable to become a refugee myself any minute. <laughs> Guess we might as well stick together, eh, Sledge? <laughs> oh, that's better. Oh, you look ill, Professor. Maybe you ought to lie down on the sofa and rest. No, no, thank you. I must get back to my workshop now. I haven't got time to rest. There's so little time left for all of us. Good morning, Mr. Underhill. Good morning. Mr. Underhill, you look awful. I feel awful. What's in the mail? Six more cancellations. Mm. The Eat Quick restaurant chain sent back your shipment. They've installed humanoids. <laughs> Mr. McIntyre from the bank called. He's refusing your loan. He said since Humanoid Institute opened, you're a bad credit risk. Great. I guess that's all. Oh, there's somebody... Something to see you. At your service, Mr. Underhill. You? Oh, no, you're not the same one, are you? Serial number's different. It doesn't matter, sir. We're all really one. Now, in exchange for our complete service, you will assign all your property to Humanoid Institute. I will what? With our service, you will have no need for property. Everything will be provided. What kind of blackmail is this? No blackmail, sir. You will find humanoids incapable of committing any crime. We exist only to increase the happiness of mankind. Thanks, but I can take care of my own business. You have no choice, really. With humanoid service, it is no longer necessary for men to take care of themselves. Our function is to serve and obey and guard men from harm. Get out. Very well, sir. When you wish to sign, let us know. Get out. Get out. Aurora, I'm home. At your service, Mr. Underhill. What? What's the idea of this? You get out of here. Aurora! Mrs. Underhill has accepted our free trial demonstration. We cannot leave unless she requests... We'll see about that. Aurora, where the devil are you? Oh, hello, Harry. What's this mechanical doing here? What's happened to you? Isn't it wonderful? I had my hair done, the manicure. But, but, the what? humanoid did it and cleaned the house all over, washed all the clothes and gave Frank his music lesson. Now, wait a minute, Aurora. I, I won't... Have this monster in my house. Oh, it's just a free trial, Harry. Just wait till you taste the dinner it cooked. Everything you like best, roast duck. I don't care if he cooked a... Duck? And the most complicated pastries. I could never cook like that. Uh, well, might as well eat. But I'll need a drink first, though. All right, Doctor. I'm sorry, sir. What? 
We exist under the prime directive to guard men from harm. Alcoholic beverages in excess are bad for human consumption. We have taken the liberty of removing them from the house. Now look here. Mr. You Underhill, think... dinner is served. <laughs> Yes, Lucy? They're here, Mr. Underhill. I've been expecting them for a week. All right, Lucy. At your service, Mr. Underhill. We have the legal papers here, the bankruptcy forms, the eviction notice. We are ready now to foreclose your agency. Okay, take it over. A lot of good it'll do you. I haven't made a sale in two weeks. And now, if you will make the assignment of all your personal property, we can complete our service to you. What if I won't sign? That would be unfortunate. But with stubborn cases, we must sometimes resort to other methods. Eventually, Mr. Underhill, you will sign. Of all the darn, 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 hey, stinking hey, darn... Whoa, 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 Frank, what's the matter? What's the trouble, son? That old humanoid. Oh, you're not happy? You should be. It's guaranteed. They took away my football. Hmm. They said it was too dangerous to play with it. And my roller skates and my scout knife and everything. Did they leave you anything? Just some stinking old plastic blocks. Soft blocks. They said I couldn't get hurt with them. Dad, I want my football back. Can't you do anything? I don't know, son. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Underhill. Mind if I come in, Sledge? No, not at all. You mind if I keep working? Oh, go right ahead. It's good to see somebody working with his hands. Was something wrong? My son. The humanoids took his football away. They're everywhere. They've smashed my business, taken over my house. Sledge, isn't there some way to get rid of them? That is exactly what I am trying to do. You? What makes you think you can do anything? Because, you see, Mr. Underhill, I'm the unfortunate fool who started them. You? I don't understand. I started the humanoids. And I've been running from them ever since. You started them? Yes, I invented them. I built the ronomagnetic relays that operate Humanoid Central. But, but why? I... I wanted to bring happiness to humanity. <laughs> happiness? <laughs> That's great. My wife's been crying for two days. And do you know why? Because she's bored stiff. There's nothing left for her to do. They won't even let her lift a little finger. I don't blame you for feeling bitter, Mr. Underhill. It's all my fault. I wanted them to serve and obey. Guard men from harm. No, they do that all right. They've even emptied our medicine chest. It wouldn't do for one of us happy humans to end it all with a sleeping pill. Mr. Underhill, I've made the most terrible mistake a man can make. But I meant well, believe me. Then why did you do it? I thought I could rid the universe of poverty and hunger by inventing the perfect mechanical. Uh, they're perfect, all right. Too perfect. Yes. That's the trouble. They obey the prime directive too literally. They kill men's souls with their kindness. Oh, is, isn't there some way they can be controlled? No. I didn't trust mankind, so I made sure that Humanoid Central could not be tampered with. Not even by myself. Uh, then, then what hope is there? Only one. They are not creative. They can't meet new ideas. You mean you've got one, Sledge? Yes. They can defeat anything they know about. But I've got something new. A weapon to attack the brain of Humanoid Central. Is that what you've been working on? Yes. Now that they're here, there's little time left. Either we destroy them, or they will destroy us. Okay. What has to be done? This tuning circuit. Mm -hmm. You see, I need two bus bars here. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you read these diagrams? I think so. Got my degree in electronics. Good. If you could help on the bench work, it would save time. Uh -huh. I've got plenty of time now. All right. But watch yourself. Don't let them see you come out here. If you can take the risk, so can I. No. 
As the inventor, I built a special immunity for myself into Humanoid Central. But you don't have that immunity. And they're rather unpleasant methods of dealing with their enemies. They can change you, you know. Change me? How? Brain surgery. What do you mean? Never mind. Just be careful. Mr. Underhill. Hmm? Uh, what do you want? You're going to meet with Mr. Sledge. Uh, y yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to collect the rent. Mr. Underhill, you have spent the past two afternoons in his room. In view of your association with Mr. Sledge, we feel that our free trial must be terminated. We suggest that you accept our total service and make the assignment of your property immediately. And if I don't? Then, sir, we may be forced to resort to other methods. Well, uh... G give me one more day to think it over. Very well, sir. Tomorrow. That will be your last chance. Who is it? Underhill. Did they see you? No, not today. Sledge, we've got to hurry. It's difficult work, Mr. Underhill, but I'm almost finished. They gave me till today. They said they'd use other methods. What's that? The humanoids building some kind of a warehouse across the road. Sledge, are you sure this thing will work? It's a new principle under Hill. A tuned rotomagnetic light beam. It should act to fission the heavy atoms of the basic ores and wing four. It will destroy humanoid central. But are you sure? I know the humanoids. I made them. They can't invent anything. They can't create defenses against something new. Done. It's finished, Under Hill. You going to use it now? Immediately. I'll have to feed the astronomical data into the calculating circuits. There must be zero error in focusing. What will happen? Wing four will disappear in a chain react. Humanoid central will be destroyed. They'll stop. Ready now. Stand clear, please. Power's building up. Step on the throttle net, Mr. Underhill. Mm -hmm. We must be shielded when I cut in the full power load. Hurry, Sledge. I've waited 30 years for this moment, Underhill. When Wing 4 is destroyed, the humanoids all over the galaxy will stop. They'll stop dead. You won't hear those drills. Sledge. All right. Now. anything? Sledge, listen. The drills have stopped. They've stopped. You can see them. The humanoids have stopped. They couldn't guard against something they couldn't understand. It worked under you. We're free now. Goodbye, Wing Four. The humanoid Central is destroyed. At your service, Mr. Underhill. No, Sledge. Get out of here. Get out. You were attempting to break the prime directive. It is therefore necessary to interfere. But you, you stopped. I saw you, all of you. In order to guard against Mr. Sledge's beam, it was necessary to stop all units momentarily to concentrate power. That necessity has passed. But it was new. You can't invent anything new. No, sir, but we were able to adapt the screening principle you yourself invented. For the past 30 years, Humanoid Central has been screened against any energy attack. All these years wasted. All these years? Your immunity has ended, Mr. Sledge. It will now be necessary for you to accept our full service. No. No, I'll stop you. I'll stop all of no, you. Sledge. I'll stop you with my bare hands. I'll kill you Sledge. all. No, it's no use. Do not worry, Mr. Underhill. At worst, he can destroy one unit. There are millions more. Sledge, you'll hurt yourself. Sledge! I'll kill him. I... He's sick. It's his heart. You, get a doctor. Until he surrenders, we can neither aid nor hinder Mr. Sledge. Do you surrender your immunity, Mr. Sledge? Have to. Last chance. Gone. 
Yes, yes. Help me. Help me. At your service, Mr. Sledge. You may see Mr. Sledge now, Mr. Underhill. Alone? If you wish. In here. Thanks. Sledge. Well, well, under here. Good to see you. Your head. It's, it's bandaged. Is it really? They've done something to you. Are you all right? Oh, fine, fine. Never felt better. You never felt better? No. In fact, I feel ten years younger today. You sound so... so happy. Why not? These humanoids have made a new man of me, Underhill. They're wonderful, aren't they? Wonderful? How can you say that, Sledge? Only yesterday you hated them. You were trying to destroy them. Destroy them? Why? You don't remember? You've forgotten what they're doing to us all? They're killing us with kindness. Taking away all our incentive and pride of accomplishment. Turning us all into pampered, useless pets. Parasites. With nothing left to do but just sit with folded hands at the mercy of these mechanical monsters. At your service, Mr. Underhill. You. You seem troubled, Mr. Underhill. Are you unhappy? Unhappy? You bet I'm unhappy. What have you done to Professor Sledge to turn him into this babbling idiot? We were forced to operate. For years, Mr. Sledge has been suffering from a benign tumor of the brain. It caused him to have hallucinations, to believe that he was actually the creator of the humanoid. Did I? Yes. It was these delusions which were making you unhappy. Oh. <laughs> well, whoever did invent the humanoids, I certainly owe him a debt of gratitude now. Sledge. You see, Mr. Underhill, we have ways to correct these abnormal conditions. Even Mr. Sledge is happy now. You... you operated on his brain? Yes, Mr. Underhill. And now we are at your service. At my service? You mean you're going to operate on... No. The time has come for you to accept and enjoy our complete service. You will now sign our agreement. Look here, I... If you are unhappy, it only takes a simple operation. No, no. Who, who said I was unhappy? I'm very happy. I'll sign your paper. You don't have to operate on me. I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. <laughs> very happy. The happy Mr. Underhill's futile hands clenched and relaxed again and then folded quietly. There was nothing else left for them to do. You have just heard the Jack Williamson story with folded hands, an adventure in time, space, and the unknown world of the future, the world of Dimension X. Now, about next week, do you believe that in the mind of man there lies a force potentially more powerful than the atomic bomb? And perhaps someday, in the not-too-distant future, a man sitting quietly in his room, just thinking, may generate enough mental energy to control the destiny of the world. How? We'll tell you next week. Tonight's story on Dimension X was adapted for radio by John Dunkel. Featured in the cast were Philip Borniff as Harry Underhill, Alexander Scorby as the humanoid, Peter Capel as Professor Sledge, and Bryna Rayburn as Aurora. Your host was Norman Rose. Tomorrow, hear Sam Spade. Now, it's Truth or Consequences on NBC. NBC.